Good afternoon. I'm Matt Shukro. Uh, thanks for having us today uh, for this press conference to discuss uh, the governor's unveiling of some important legislation. Uh, so first, I'd like to introduce uh, the Commissioner of Revenue, Bruce Tangerman, who's going to be joining us today to go over some of the details of the bill. Uh, but it's my pleasure to introduce our Governor Dunleavy and also a message to the reporters, a few things. Um, we have a packet, an info packet, uh, a one-pager, and we have a transmittal letter and also the copy of the bills. Uh, for any of you guys out there, if you'd like those, I'm happy to distribute those after the, the conference here. Uh, and then furthermore, uh, due to time, uh, we're going to certainly prioritize folks here uh, in the room in Juneau first uh, and do a round of questions. And it, time permitting, we'll, we'll be able to open it up to, to folks on the phone. So it's my honor to introduce uh, Governor Dunleavy. Hello, folks. How's everyone doing? Good. Yes, you can do that. Good, good, good. So today we're, we're here to do a, just a brief press conference on the uh, issue of the PFD. As you know, I've been a proponent of treating the PFD as it always has been treated, it, not as an appropriation, but as a transfer. And to uh, remedy what I believe has been an inconsistency in how the PFD has been treated the last several years, we're going to be introducing measures to back pay Alaskans. Uh, Commissioner Tangerman will talk just in a moment here, but we'll do, uh, we'll do back pays to complete what are incomplete dividends from our, uh, our perspective. He'll answer the questions on earnings reserve, how much money's in it, et cetera, and I think it'll take care of all of the uh, questions folks have. Um, but we want people to, uh, people to understand that when we campaign on commitments, you have to fulfill those commitments. And when you have laws in place, you should follow those laws. If you don't like the laws, we should change the laws. And that's our position. So you'll see some measures come out today. We'll be do you have them in front of you, I see. We will, we will uh, complete the back pay over several years, make this right, and then move forward. If, people, if, if the people of Alaska want to change the PFD program or the permanent fund, they should be part of that change. So with that, I'll turn this over to uh, Commissioner Tangerman to answer any detailed questions. Good afternoon, everyone. Just a couple of the, uh, the finer points on what the bills do. They address both eligibility and the amount that will be uh, included in the back pay. So the eligibility first. Uh, if you qualify for a dividend this year and you qualified for a dividend in 2016, that amount will be included in your dividend payment this year. And that calculated amount, based on the, the legal calculation from statute, is an additional $1,061. The 2020 dividend will act the same way, but it will bring in the 2017 amount that was due. And that amount is $1,289. The 2021 dividend will include the amount from 2018, and that amount is $1,328. So you have to be eligible in the year you're receiving the dividend and also would have had to have been eligible in 2016 or 2017 or 2018 to receive that amount. So again, as you see the bill, it's a very simple bill. We like simple bills. They're two pages each. It's very, very simple how this works. Um, Obviously, the funds that were not distributed according to the law over the last three years have been sitting in the ERA and earning interest, which is a good thing. Um, but now we're going back to make the law correct and make those payments over the next three years. Uh, if there's any questions on the technical aspects, I'd be happy to answer them. Steve. Steve from KTV. Uh, Commissioner, on the uh, eligibility, if people who qualified in 2016 2017, you know, some of them had to leave the state because of our recession. Why shouldn't they be still eligible to receive the money that people thought they should have received in 2016 or 2017 or 2018? Um, it's a good question, Steve. You know, there's, it, I don't know if people have looked at the fine print when you apply for a dividend, but there is language in there that says, I am now and intend to remain an Alaskan resident indefinitely. Um, things change. People move. We understand that. But I think that's one of the main reasons why we're staging this over three years. You know, I think the general concept was everybody was going to get it this October. But I think this helps address that for people who have already left and for the people, for Alaskans, who are here and intend to remain here for the next several years. 
So I think this is a, an artful way to address that issue. Yeah, Becky. Becky Bohr with the Associated Press. One point of clarification and then a question. You said it would be included in the dividend this year. Do you mean on top of or is it going to be 1061 in addition to whatever the full dividend is? That's our intent. We need to, uh, we're going to have to do some, some programming, et cetera. There's a small fiscal note to handle this within the permanent fund dividend division itself. But the intent, I believe, is to issue one check. So one check, but it would be Both full amounts. dividend plus the one Correct. And, and then I just wanted to find out, um, SB 26 seeks to limit the amount taken out. Mm -hmm. um, OMB has already had $1.9 billion for full dividend and a billion for budget. Right. Um, where does this fit in, and why should this not fall under that limit? So... This is, a, this is a separate issue than the POMV calculation. These, we're making things correct from years past. The POMV took effect in FY19, and that calculation still stands. It's 5.25 of the previous five years ending balances. That calculates to about $3 billion for FY20. So this is a, I view this as a completely separate issue. The POMV is the POMV. This is following the law that had been on the books for the last three years, and we're just making that right. Bruce, can I uh, oh, just real excuse me. No, that's okay. Stay here. Um, there's three issues. There's um, following the law, which is the uh, historic calculation that we're going to follow. There is the POMV, which I didn't agree with, but is the law. That's a separate issue, the $3 billion, as Bruce mentioned. So this bill addresses the other issue, which is the back pay and making those um, dividends complete. So you would go into the ER where the back pay is and pull it out in this measure, where the PFD for this coming year would come out of the POMV draw under, under SB 26. Yes, James. In some of the later sections, the advance allocations of the dividends, given the way the formula is calculated for the dividend, it's based on years of investment earnings, right? Correct. How do you calculate the future dividends and the transfer in advance? So the calculation is still being based on, um, and are you from, the dividend calculation is, is quite complex. It's five years, it's 21% of the statutory net income, and then 50%. Of, so it's a very complex number, but we are still using the the statutory net income of those five years. We're not going to try and account for if a full dividend had been paid in 2016, then the calculation would be this. We're just, again, it's very simple. It's very clean. We're just using the statutory net income of those years, regardless of what took place. And, um, I, we know that one legislature can't bind another. I mean, what's the binding power of, of those sections then? Um, there is no binding power as far as it is subject to appropriation, obviously, the, the, for future um, legislatures. Andrew Kitcheman, Alaska Public Media and KTOO. Why didn't you do the entire payback in a single year? Good question, Andrew. I think that goes to the, the quote that I said that's the fine print. I am now and intend to remain an Alaskan resident indefinitely. Right now, today, January 16th, there are people that will, would have qualified and will get a dividend that are no longer in Alaska. Um, I think this addresses the fact that this is intended for Alaskans that were here and, and are still here and intend to remain here into the future. So, yes, some people will have qualified in 16, maybe not in 17, and maybe they qualify again in 18. This addresses those folks. Um, instead of giving people that did qualify that are now gone, instead of giving them the full lump sum for all three years, we think this is a, a reasonable way to spread it out over three years. Great night, KIMY. Knowing that all Alaskans are consumers, does the administration anticipate a bottom line bump um, as these folks get their increased dividends? Will there be a bottom line bump to the economy in Alaska? No doubt. Absolutely. No doubt. If, uh, if you and if you infuse this back pay that's been sitting in the earnings reserve, earning money into the economy, absolutely. I mean, uh, I, I think uh, any research would tell you that, but also anecdotally, 
from what I'm hearing from folks all over the state, business owners, individuals, you name it, every part of the state, they have every intention of doing what they do with the uh, PFD, taking care of fuel, fixing cars, buying a snow machine for transportation. Absolutely. I think you'll see a bump, big bump. Sean, go ahead. I'm so, Sean McGuire, Channel 2. Um, I was wondering how much money is in the earnings reserve account and how the state can afford to pay out this amount of money when there is a $1.6 billion deficit. Um, good question, Sean, and very good timing because the financials just came out from the permanent fund today for uh, December 31st. So the total amount is $60.4 billion, 60 billion. Of that, the principal is 43.8, and the ERA is 16.6. .6. So just two months ago, the, the ERA, ERA balance was in that $17 billion, and despite some really active markets over the last couple months. Most of those were in the unrealized portion. So the ERA has stayed pretty consistent at $17 billion. Uh, I think the way this administration is really looking at the ERA now, it's, it's not $17 billion. It's what would have been there had, these, had the law been followed for three years and the full dividend had been paid out. So if you add up the total amount, it's roughly $2.3 billion. So really, the ERA would be $14.3 billion had, plus or minus because of interest, um, had the law been followed. So the next question is, you know, back to the POMB. That's the calculation. That's the law on the book. Books, um, as far as the budget goes, again, that's a separate discussion that will be addressed. The budget will be rolled out here in the next couple of weeks by the OMB director, and that's that's separate from what's being discussed right now. This is just making correct um, the past three years. Yeah, Vicki. Commissioner, can you give us the numbers for three years for the, the back pay, approximately how many hundreds of million for would have to come out of the earnings reserve? Sure, and that's, you know, it's a fairly simple calculation. You look at who received a dividend in 2016. Um, and multiply it by the 1,061. So that's about 683 million. The amount for 2017 is about 825 million. And the amount for 2018 is about 850 million. Now, that's the worst case scenario or the high end because that's assuming everybody that would have qualified in 16 also qualifies in 19. We know that number is going to be less. So this is kind of the upper end, and that's about $2.3 billion total. Aaron? Aaron McGrady, Fort Banks Daily News Miner. Up until this point, the PFD application process has been really, really, relatively straightforward. Um, do you anticipate this changing the process at all, and how do you see those uh, changes panning out? Good question. It won't change the, the process whatsoever, because the applications for 2016 are already in the system. People are applying now for the 2019 dividend, so we'll just be, that's what the programming, a um, couple hundred hours worth of programming will accomplish is, is pulling those people that, that qualified in both years. Mm -hmm. So it won't affect um, the applicants or Alaskans whatsoever. James. James Brooks from the Anchorage Daily News. What um, type of legislative discussions have you had with legislators? What type of legislative buy-in do you have? That's, uh, that's going to happen with the introduction of the bill. That's, the, that's what the process is. That's what these bills are. In our future packages on public safety, permanent fiscal plan, that's how it'll take shape. When we roll them out, we'll have those discussions with uh, legislators, just like the process is supposed to happen. Uh, we want to have an open and transparent approach to things. This is one of the reasons why we want to go back and fix this so we can move forward. This is going to be a sticking point if we don't move forward. And um, I'm under no illusions that we have 60 individuals in the legislature, I was there, that um, have different ideas about things. We'll have those discussions. But I think we're going to make a pretty strong case. In talking with some of the legislatures, this legislators, there's a number of folks that agree with this um, uh, on both sides of the aisle. I think there was a, there's a bill being introduced on uh, the uh, Democrat side to, uh, to make this right as well. So I think it'll be an interesting discussion, a vigorous discussion. I think in the end, the legislature will do the right thing. Um, you know, it was asked, what are people going to spend their money on, right? We just had an earthquake on November 30th. We're working through uh, uh, some issues with the federal government and FEMA to try and get uh, earthquake uh, some funds here to take care of our infrastructure. But a lot of folks lost a lot of things in their houses as well. 
a lot of things. And so, again, this is probably, um, it's unfortunate that we have to do this. It, it, I, I, as I mentioned, and I think the record's pretty clear, I wasn't necessarily in agreement with how things happened in the past. But we want to move forward. That's what this is um, all about. Governor, um, you've expressed an interest in putting the permanent fund dividend in the Alaska Constitution. There are a couple of uh, proposals related to that uh, that have already been made pre-filed. Uh, do you anticipate um, filing your, your own legislation, or have you taken a look at those? Or I guess you're not a position, but um, have you got, taken a look at those? And, and what are your thoughts on uh, putting this in the Constitution? Well, I've been consistent in that I want the PFD protected. We'll be reviewing all the bills. We'll be rolling out our own uh, uh, bill that will um, make this happen as well in terms of putting it in the Constitution. Steve? Um, Governor, um, I know that there often are, are exceptions. What about the military who, you know, they can only commit to what the federal government says and maybe not necessarily to the application? Um, you talking about back pay? Back pay, yes. Uh, we, we've talked about a lot of these issues, um, you know, and it can get really complex. We felt that this was the best way to approach this, is, um, is using, this using this methodology. And we understand, I mean, we have nothing but respect for our military, and we understand they get transferred, but this is what we believe is going to work. If through the process somebody comes up with a better idea, we're more than willing to listen to it. But um, this is what we're, we're rolling out now because we think it'll work. Real quick, I want to check in if we have any calls from online, on the, on the phone. Thank you very much. Steve? Greg. Or, or Greg. Greg, Greg, Greg yeah. um, this might be a better question for the commissioner. Um, will staggering the payments to the PFD, the back PFD, as opposed to one lump sum, have any effect whatsoever on the credit rating of the state of Alaska? It shouldn't. Uh, it, and if it did, it would only be positive because we're leaving money in the ERA to earn interest and, and grow that account. So. Um, having not spoken with bond counsel at all, I would assume it's, it wouldn't harm our credit rating, actually. So we may have time for one or two more questions. So, Becky, go ahead and maybe one more. For the governor, um, sir, you mentioned um, your own bill dealing with PFD in the Constitution, and in this packet, you it mentions um, full dividends through 2023. Is that to say, then, that you're comfortable um, knowing that knowing the state of play with the state's finances, that you're comfortable pressing forward with the traditional formula, or should we expect some sort of change? No, I, I, I'm comfortable with the way the law is, and I'm comfortable with the people being involved in any changes. I, you know, it's, it's fascinating, Becky, when you think about it. <clears throat> we all run for office, 61 of us. We go to the very people we're talking about right now. We lay out our agendas, we lay out our campaign planks, and we ask them for their vote. And then when we come down here, what often happens is um, we don't follow those campaign promises. One of the things I ran into the campaign trail when I was out there was we don't even follow our own laws sometimes. This does not do a lot to uh, gain the trust of the people in the political system or their politicians. So again, I want to involve the people of Alaska in the permanent fund and the PFD. I think what happened um, back in the 70s and early 80s, I think those folks were enlightened. There were a number of constitutional amendments that were contemplated, and those enlightened politicians back then um, engaged the people of Alaska. And just imagine for a second if they were never engaged and there was never a permanent fund. You wouldn't be talking about $64 billion. We wouldn't be having this discussion. So it's the, I, I put my faith in the people of Alaska. I'm going to put my faith in a, hopefully a whole bunch of enlightened legislators so that we can make sure that Alaska writes what I think was wrong, and we can move forward with the engagement of the people to see what we want to do with the permanent fund or the PFD. All right, I think that's it, guys. We're Thank you very much.